Hello again YouTube. Today I'm going to do uh, a pretty short video on a Seymour Brown rangefinder. This would have been an accessory to probably almost any camera available at the time back in the 20s or maybe the 30s. Uh, I don't really know the vintage of this particular gizmo. Um, there's a pretty good look at what it is. You can see how small it is. This is your adjustment dial. You look through this little eyepiece here and like all range finders you turn the dial until its split images come together and that gives you your range. <clears throat> this one is considerably out of whack. Um, I have two. I got one so that it's pretty close and I'm just going to go through very quickly uh, what I did to get it as far as I got it. It's not perfect, but it's closer than it was. So as you're looking at this thing, this is this is the working side. You look through here. On the end, you see it has an end cap. Okay, that screws off. Very gently, do not force it. Take the end cap off, and that gives you access to you probably won't be able to see those but inside here there's two screws on on the back side of one of the mirrors the mirrors that uh, receives light from this side there's two screws top and bottom when your image if you're looking at your I'm gonna try and do this here when you're looking at through the rangefinder you're gonna see two images what they're supposed to do is come together and make a single image on mine they're like this and they would come together like this and be pretty far off. So what what I did to get them to line up horizontally because they were like this, I adjusted each of these screws. Uh, you turn the top one in or out. You turn the bottom one opposite the way you turn the top one. You have to fit, you have to play around with this thing. Um, I can't explain it scientifically. I just know that when the two images were like this, I worked the screws very gently, no more than a quarter turn at a time. And usually not even that, because it takes a tiny, tiny little bit of a turn to make your images go all over the place. But in my case, I had to bring one image down, so I turned the top screw in, just a little tweak, and I turned the bottom screw in the opposite direction just a little tweak to get that mirror to do this and I got the images so they were pretty close and it's within a couple of feet that not this one but the one I had worked on is within a couple of feet of being correct uh, but it's going to take some more time so after you've got your horizontal images so that they're just about dead on you got two screws here I've got these taped because they're a little bit loose I, I think this one I'm trying to keep this in frame here. I think this this one here is possibly stripped or near to it. So I, I put a piece of tape on it to hold them in place. You loosen this screw a little bit and you loosen this screw a little bit. And this one will give you a little bit of motion diagonally across the, the top of, of the range finder. Uh, you have to play with this. I can't explain it to you so it makes any sense. But if you loosen this one slightly loosen this one slightly you can move these you can move that mirror in there around a little bit and try and get those images to go together at the right distance that that the dial says you're at um, there's a method to it I can't find anywhere on the internet anything that's specific to this particular range finder I assume that they're all more or less the same yeah, um, but I haven't finished it yet I just wanted to show this to you. Um, it's a very neat little gadget. It's made mostly out of brass. It's got a steel wheel. It's very solid for what it is. When you take these caps off, okay, there's your little cap. Be very careful taking them off and be very careful putting them back on. They're not really threaded. There's like, well, it's kind of threaded. There's thread marks on the inside of all four flat spots. So when you put it back on, you want to 
don't force it just kind of fiddle with it until it feels like it's found its grooves or you'll get it stuck like I just did and, oh boy and you want to just very gently keep working it until you feel it. See, it's crooked again. There. And when you tighten it, just done. Just like that. Don't want to force these things because there's not enough thread there to say so. If you strip it, you're done. Um, so, again, your horizontal alignment to make to make your images come together this way is in the end very delicate very tiny turns on the screwdriver don't force it and for your vertical to make them come together the way they're supposed to at different ranges and you'll have to I, I would assume that you're gonna need to start at the beginning which is 2.5 feet and then take it up to well this goes to 300 feet I wouldn't try it that far. I would think if you can get the thing pretty darn close from two and a half feet to probably 20 feet, you're doing pretty good. Oh, I was off, off frame again. Um, and really, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Quick, um, marginally helpful video. This also is another VHS to digital conversion. I'm filming this in uh, an old camcorder, and I'm going to use my nifty $20 gizmo I got on Amazon to convert it to an AVI file for uploading. Um, and that really is all I have on this right now. If I find some other secret, I certainly will make another video and post it accordingly. Until next time, bye.